and the culture surrounding it with not only that, but also you mentioned the F word with the gay community. Right. How, how can we educate well, rather than deteriorate? Yeah, well, I think we should all uh, be educated about the use of the historical based epithets. The N word was an epithet hurled against black people who were vulnerable with lethal intensity. What do we have to do? We have to examine how they responded to it. How did they respond to it? In part, they absorbed the poison from the term and then recirculated the term as a term of endearment among African American people. All black people don't buy that. I get that. Does it have complications? Yes. But it does suggest that there's a difference between the N-word as deployed by a dominant white culture or a person who belongs to that culture and someone who stands outside of that culture within African American society. Black people using the term as a term of endearment is different than white people who don't even mean something negative by it using that term. It's like me using the B-word. As much fun as I want to signify by using that term toward women, that's inappropriate and off limits to me. Even if I'm standing next to women who are using it all day. That's their right and privilege, inside group, outside group. Italians, Poles, Jews, Lithuanians, gays and lesbians, African Americans, Puerto Ricans, Chicanos, all in groups have the ability to signify on each other in a way that people outside the culture don't. And so I think we have to take that into account with the N-word. The problem with the N-word, of course, is that unlike any other epithet, this word was connected to a history and tradition of hurting and harming black people and a system of custom, habit, tradition, and law that really undermine our standing in the culture. So that's why black people are hypersensitive to that word, and I understand why. But I don't think the solution is to ban black people from using it. It's to say to anybody who's not black, this word is off limits. This is not a word that you should be using, even if you listen to it, even if you have the privilege of hearing it. And it amazes me uh, when I hear people say, well, white people will be confused. They hear that term. They invented the term. So we're taking it from them. They're just trying to take it back. Chris Rock has a huge, a, a hilarious routine where he goes that some white people, some white people think that if their work, their lives could be fulfilled if they could just use the N word. You know, well, this is partly a word that was, this was a word invented in dominant white culture. It was seized within black culture, and now people are trying to take it back, expropriate it, appropriate it, reappropriate it. And I say that the word is alive, it's vital, it's like a bomb, it's explosive. So what we have to do is like a hand grenade. So what we have to do is to make sure that we have as much knowledge and information as we can about the use of the word. I don't think young white kids in classrooms should be using the term to be sure. But when Mark Twain uses that word in his book, instead of erasing the word from the text, let's bring in history. Let's understand why Mark Twain used that word. How white people on a daily basis saw that as another term for black, for African American, for Negro at that point. So I think what we have to do is to tell the truth about that history and that tradition rather than removing it. Uh, as far as the F word, obviously again, we've got to take into account the history and tradition of derision and demonization of gay, lesbian, transgender, and bisexual people. We live in a homophobic culture. We live in a culture that is afraid of gay people, afraid of the gay experience, ignorant about it, and demonizing them. So let's come to a point where we understand the need to treat people with utter respect, black, white, red, brown, yellow, and the like, and at the same time understand the traditions of heterosexism, which have really undermined the legitimacy and the stability of gay, lesbians, transgender, and bisexual brothers and sisters. <coughs> Okay, and you mentioned a lot of music lyrics where using the N-word and the white people may be confused, things of that nature. What is, what do you think the greatest thing about the hip-hop culture is? Mm -hmm. And also, what is its biggest flaw as far as understanding the rhetoric? Well, obviously, uh, its biggest contribution is it, it teaches people to take tradition and context seriously. Um, here's, a, here's a real rule of thumb. In case white people are confused, let me help you understand. When is it appropriate for you to use the N-word? Never. <laughs> Never. How, how difficult is that? Never. I got black friends. Never. I have 10 black friends. Never. We're, we're singing rap songs. Never. We're in class singing it. Never. I know that's tough. I know it's hard. But, you know, we got to grow up. I mean, I don't want to infantilize white brothers and sisters. You can't use it. It's not a term that's on, you know, that's on limits for you. It's off limits. It makes things complicated. Yes, you're at a Jay-Z concert and you're standing next to your black friend and you're saying it for the night. Okay, if you can get away with it, but don't go to Harlem using it. And I wouldn't recommend that you use it anyway. Understand the condition, the history, the tradition, and the culture from which it's emerged and why it's been so harmful and difficult for white people to use that term or non-blacks. Um, 
As far as the worst thing of hip-hop culture, obviously, you know, what's worse about America? It's hyper-materialism, it's consumptive practices, it's homophobia, it's sexism, it's misogyny, it's patriarchy. These are lethal sins, so to speak. And I think that uh, hip-hop shares in them. And if hip-hop does anything wrong, it's to glorify and glamorize some of the worst uh, habits and traits uh, among Americans and that get amplification and glorification in the realm of hip-hop. Is hip-hop, R&B, and everything surrounding it any more different than, say, a country song that would be bigotory or a rock song that would be bigotory of some sort? Yeah, um, look, the bigoted practices of all have to be taken into consideration. I mean, country music, I love country music, I'm a fan of country music, but it has its bigotry. It has its bigotry toward gays and lesbians, transgender and bisexual people. It has its bigotry toward black people. Uh, but there's no comparable moment in country music that has arisen the same way hip-hop has, where such systemic and constant barrage of derision has emanated from the circles of country music. So hip-hop, in one sense, has done something unique. It has turned you know, the reproduction of epithets against women, against gays and lesbians, and of course, between black people, uh, into an art. Some say it's artless, some say it's artful. Uh, the reality is that there's no parallel in contemporary music uh, to compare hip-hop to. So while there are offensive language, there's offensive language in all forms of popular music, hip-hop is taken to the end. Okay, thank you.